important to know that the thing that made uh, New Hope really profitable and, and, and economically sound from the time that it was uh, founded, uh, and it, for a while it was uh, Coriol's Ferry before it came New Hope, Mills played a very, very important role. They also played a very important role as the conditions of the original land grant uh, holder for him to get that grant. So let's read this. In 1700, Robert Heath acquired a thousand acres of land from an original William Penn grant to Thomas Woolrich. As part of an agreement with Penn, Heath built a grist mill here on the north bank of Aquatong Creek. The mill was powered by the constant flow of water generated by the Great Spring. Important to note as well that that spring, uh, apparently over 2,000 gallons of water per minute is what it actually makes. It's really impressive. And there's actually north of the town, I believe it's north of the town, is where the uh, spring is. I may be wrong, maybe south. I'm sorry, I get a little confused. Actually, it is It's south, sorry. It is south of the town, and they actually have a park there. It's pretty cool. Uh, mills continue to operate at this location for over 200 years. The ruins of a grist mill and a cotton mill that was converted to a silk mill still exist on the south bank of the creek. These mills and their workers were immortalized in several paintings by Robert Spencer in the early 1900s. This is, this is what made New Hope, and it's actually the reasoning behind it being called New Hope in the first place, which we'll go into that with the next sign of New Hope Mills. Here is the last sign, Ferry Landing. Coriol, Coriol's Ferry, a small hamlet on the Delaware River, played an important strategic role during the War for Independence. Throughout the war, the ferry crossing was traversed countless times by messengers, supplies, and military detachments. In December 1776, before the Battle of Trenton, the village was a military stronghold protecting the American Army's flank from British forces. Following the capture of Philadelphia in September 1777, Coriolis Ferry was one of the few river crossing points between Pennsylvania and New Jersey free from enemy interference. In June 1778, General Washington marched his army from, the, from Valley Forge to the Delaware crossing here before the Battle of Monmouth. The ferry operated for about 100 years until the first bridge was built between New Hope and Lambertville in the early 1800s. So let's check out some more cool stuff here in the town of New Hope. So here we are at the Perry Mansion. This is actually a museum today. Uh, and the sign says, the Perry Mansion exemplifies the prosperity of the New Hope in the Bucks or early days of the New Republic, uh, constructed of Bucks County Fieldstone. The mansion is a fine example of Georgian architecture. It was built in the late 1700s in what was then Cor Coriel's Ferry, a small but well-known Revolutionary War village. Benjamin and Jane Paxson Perry became the first of five generations of the Perrys to live here after their marriage in 1787. In 1966, the, prosper uh, the property was purchased by the New Hope Historical Society. 
Today, it serves the community as the Perry Mansion Museum and houses the headquarters of the New Hope Historical Society. Next, we're going to visit the Vassant House. This is the oldest stone house in New Hope. It was built in 1743 by Ichabod, there's a name, Wilkinson, an iron master from Providence, Rhode Island. The structure is an excellent example of the colonial kitchen parlor style. Also, I believe it's sort of like the Georgian architecture with the field stone again. Mary Wilkinson, Ichabod's daughter, uh, married Jos Joshua Vassant, and they lived in this house for many years. Vassant was a builder and early developer of the town. In the late 1800s, when the roof was being replaced, grape shot was found uh, embedded in the wood. The grape shot was allegedly fired by British soldiers from across the Delaware River in December 1776. So this is the old town hall, and we had there in the video that you can read it for yourself, but it's very hard to read, so I'm actually going to read it all for you then. Uh, old Town Hall. In early America, river crossings grew into villages and villages grew into towns. By 1837, New Hope had enough people and specified needs to warrant forming its own municipal government. It became incorporated as a borough of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And that was 1837. And its first Burgess, or mayor, was John Child Perry. Perry's are very important in the history of uh, this town. In 1836, the newly elected borough council uh, bought a small plot of land at this place for a dollar so that a town hall could be constructed. This building served the borough as its office and meeting place from 1839 to 1973. It also housed the police department and the town jail. Very, very cool, cool building. Wasn't able to read it there. I actually had some people standing there that didn't want to block them or else I would have read it for you. So the next place we're stopping is at the Logan Hotel or Tavern, and the sign says Indian Logan. In the 1820s, a 10-foot-tall Native American weather vane was crafted of heavy sheet iron by Samuel Cooper and painted by, it looks like, Joseph Moon. It was paid for by private subscriptions from townspeople. The Logan Inn erected it on February 22nd, 1870, or 1828, sorry, in honor of Lenny Lenape Chief Wingo Hawking, according to folklore, the chief exchanged names with James Logan, secretary and family steward to William Penn. This pole with the Indian figure atop has been a familiar New Hope landmark for many years. So one of the other cool stories this was is we talked about the Aaron Burr uh, bed and breakfast, that there's a haunting there supposedly of Aaron Burr's spirit that's uh, sad about what he did to uh, Alexander Hamilton is sort of tormented by that. They also talk about like not a tormented spirit but supposedly Chief Logan, his spirit or Indian Native American spirits haunt this hotel once again. It's just folklore, it's just stuff in the local area, what you believe in that regard, that's your business but it's sort of one of those like cool things of the the hauntings that they have in this neighborhood in this in this town that they do have some ghost haunting stories. So the next sign that we'll read here is New Hope Mills, and this is where the name New Hope came from. In 1790, 
Benjamin Perry, who was the first person that resided in the Perry Mansion, who owned mills on both the New Jersey and Pennsylvania sides of the Delaware River, lost his mills in Pennsylvania to fire. He rebuilt them and named them New Hope Mills, commencing operation with new and fresh hope for the future of the village. Because of the mills, the town prospered and became known as New Hope and was incorporated as a borough in 1837. Perry lived across the street in a mansion and his stable was located here. Uh, the Perry Barn is one of the oldest stone, stone structures in New Hope and dates back to 1751. In eight, or 1939, one of Perry's rebuilt mills was converted to the Bucks County Playhouse that you see here. Uh, another thing to note that I will say as well, uh, this was actually the midpoint on the old York Road, which went between Philadelphia and New York City. So it was very consequential. And this is a reason why Washington wound up stopping here several times in, in, during the Revolutionary War, because it was that midpoint uh, between uh, the Continental Congress at that time and New York City that they were defending. All right, so what we have here is the Aaron Burr House it's a bed and breakfast. Now, this has been, apparently was an inn for even back in the time of Aaron Burr. Uh, Aaron Burr, for those of you that don't know, he was the gentleman. Alexander Hamilton was uh, our treasury, the first treasurer of the United States, secretary of the treasury, I should say. Uh, he was in Washington's cabinet. Uh, they have the Disney put out the uh, Hamilton the musical and stuff like that, which doesn't necessarily follow history as it is and, and different things, but it's a cool musical nonetheless. But uh, Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton did not like each other, and they had a duel in which Alexander Hamilton was killed by Aaron Burr. So in the aftermath of that death of Alexander Hamilton, Aaron Burr ran to New Hope, Pennsylvania, and this is supposedly the inn that he hid out in. Now, one of the stories that they have, if you like ghosts and ghost hunting and that type of stuff, New Hope has a bunch of that cool stuff as well. Uh, we'll talk about a, a Logan Hotel, which is, there's a lot of haunting stuff with that. But they say, supposedly, Aaron Burr's remorseful spirit is known to haunt this house. So, whether that's hogwash or whatever it is, it's still a cool story and a unique place. And we actually go by this in... The second video that Ralph and I are doing for where we actually walk around the town uh, that doesn't kind of concentrates more on the town, the architecture, and, and on these historic buildings and the history of, of New Hope and what it was before and that type of stuff, we actually went by this house. There's no historic marker there, but there is a story to it, like pretty much everything. So very, very cool. So here in closing, I just want to say thanks, everybody, for coming along on another adventure here with Ralph and myself. And thank you to Ralph for taking me on this adventure in the first place. This has been a fantastic experience. I hope you learn a little bit of history and put some pictures with that history. And uh, we will see you all about town.